as this remarkable progress has occurred in multiple myeloma, we've had to adjust our definitions of the disease and our definitions of response or success. Firstly, in terms of those patients who need to be treated with myeloma, we now, as of this year, 2015, include patients who do not have calcium, kidney problems, anemia, or bone disease. Those have been the traditional triggers for requiring therapy. Even in the absence of those uh, criterion, patients who have 60% plasma cells or a kappa lambda free light chain ratio of 100 fold abnormal or multiple sites of bone disease on MRI or scanning are now eligible for treatment. To put this more plainly, we don't use the CRAB features any longer as the only criterion for treatment. We look for 60% plasma cells in the marrow, an aberrant free light chain ratio abnormality greater than 100, and bone disease with MRI at more than one site. This extends the benefit of our treatment to a larger group of patients. On the other hand, how are we going to judge success? We've used a complete response in the past as the absence of monoclonal protein by immunofixation, and with a normal bone marrow, that was called a complete response. Now, we've evolved to include a normal kappa lambda free light chain ratio, and that now includes a stringent response. Nowadays, we are studying together with our patients the concept of looking at the bone marrow with two very sensitive techniques. Multicolor, in particular eight color immunofluorescence, or gene sequencing of the myeloma cell. Either of these techniques can detect as few as one myeloma cell in a million normal bone marrow cells. This would be called an immunophenotypic or a molecular complete response but with novel therapies, we can achieve this extent of the response for the very first time. We're also incorporating PET-CT scanning into our response criterion because we can look not only in marrow very sensitive metrics, but outside of the marrow for so-called extramedullary disease. Suffice it to say what I want to emphasize, and it's a wonderful development, is that we are eligible now to treat patients on a much more broad spectrum. Patients who previously weren't treated can now adjoin, uh, enjoy the benefit of treatment. On the other hand, we are now measuring together with our patients an extent of response we haven't appreciated before. Why is this relevant? Because we need new endpoints for our clinical trials. Since the therapies are so effective, in newly diagnosed myeloma, we can't wait eight to 10 years or longer to define whether a treatment is useful. So we need surrogate markers. And one of the surrogate markers that's being examined is this concept of the molecular complete response or the immunophenotypic response by sequencing or by immunofluorescence respectively. To make it very clear, if you have a new trial in newly diagnosed myeloma, and you could at 18 months detect somebody who had a molecular complete response, and you knew that that predicted for prolonged progression-free and overall survival at a decade, then we could get a novel agent tested and approved in real time so that patients can enjoy the benefit. So we as investigators, patients in particular, but importantly, the regulators, are very excited about ongoing studies to redefine response criterion in myeloma, not only for the clinical benefit, but for the regulatory value so that we can continue this remarkable progress that we've had over the last 10 to 15 years and inform clinical practice. For example, if you had minimal residual disease negativity, maybe you could stop maintenance treatment. Chronic myelocytic leukemia is an example where this has been tested. We don't know that in myeloma, but once we can define minimal residual disease, 
then we can, in clinical trials, see whether, in fact, somebody who achieves minimal residual disease negativity needs any additional therapy or not. So it's a new world in terms of not only the novel agents, but their effectiveness has re, uh, really reprogrammed how we think about the definition of myeloma and how we're going to judge response criterion so that we can continue to make progress and so that patients worldwide can benefit from these advances.